Hello, welcome to this video where we do our first example of a double integral in polar. In the previous video, we laid down the groundwork that lets us know how to make it work. We recognize that when we switch into polar, there's a Jacobian that we have to end up um, employing. We have to make sure that that factor is in there. And we figured out for polar what that Jacobian is. It's R. So when you're switching from dy dx into, D, uh, into dr d theta, can't forget to put in an extra factor of r. Okay, so our job is to evaluate this integral. It's an x and y, it's a Cartesian integral, but we are told ahead of time to convert it into polar. Reason being, the integrand has this, there's two reasons. The integrand has this x squared plus y squared. We saw the equations that convert us from x and y into polar and backwards. Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And also, it's the region that is circular in nature. The main thing is about the region being circular in nature. So how do we even know what the region is? Well, there's inside bounds and there's outside bounds. The inside bounds go along with the inside variable. So y is in between 0 and the square root of 1 minus x squared. x is in between 0 and 1. It's our job to figure out what this region is Let's get a good drawing of it. Everything is numerical except for y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. We need to know what that is. We know what it is, but let's just make sure. If y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, you square both sides, you move it over, it's the unit circle. Now, both the x's and the y's are positive, so it's only the upper half of the unit circle. Actually, the only the up, first quadrant in the unit circle because x's go between 0 and 1. So it's a circle of radius 1, but the, only the first quadrant because y's are positive and x's are between 0 and 1. So therefore, our region is the quarter circle in the first quadrant of the unit circle. We're doing this in polar because it's circular, and the action of doing it in polar is you come radially outward from the origin, and then you rotate that rectangle to accumulate the volume. And so, I put these little circles on the ends because they help me figure out the upper bound inside and the lower bound inside. That, that circle is the equation r equals 1. And so r, um, at the origin, r is equal to 0. So r goes from 0 to 1. How about theta? Theta starts at 0, and then it's done when you get to pi over 2. So you have your bounds. Now you have to convert the inside as well. And as we had said earlier, uh, e to the x squared plus y squared becomes e to the r squared. dy dx becomes r dr d theta. Don't forget the r. And so you're ready to go. r is between 0 and 1. Theta is between 0 and pi over 2. When it comes to the order in which you do polar, r is first. And then it's theta. Most times you could actually um, separate um, here, our integrand is only in terms of r. We could actually do this r integral and then multiply by this theta integral. But anyway, so um, it, how are you going to integrate that? It's e to the r squared, but thankfully, now that you have that r out there, you can execute a u sub. Let u be equal to r squared, then you have the extra factor of a half to account for because 2r dr is what du is. Divide by the 2 r dr is going to be replaced by half du, then it'll be just half e to the u, and that's half e to the u as an antiderivative. So the antiderivative of e to the r squared r, one half e to the r squared. We have to evaluate it from zero to one. Put a one in, we get half of e. Put a zero in, we get a half. We can leave the half out. And then we have this theta integral. That's a constant. We can pull that out. And then, you know, that's theta. At pi over 2 and at 0, it's just pi over 2 times this constant, half of e minus 1. So altogether, pi over 4, e minus 1. And that's your first double integral. Great job. Let's do another. Example 2. Given once again, an integral in x and y converted into polar. You're not told. There's things about the region and the integrand which 
convince you that you should definitely convert into polar. Here's how you do it, right? Inside bounds, inside variable, outside bounds, outside variable. So y's go between 0 and negative root 1 minus x squared, and x's go between minus 1 and 1. So it's the same guy. It's the unit circle, but um, the upper half of the unit circle has the positive square root, and the lower half of the unit circle has the negative square root. It's the, it's the unit circle, okay? But it's the lower half of it. You see, the biggest y ever gets is 0. The upper limit on y is 0. And then it's both, um, both the uh, third and the fourth quadrant because x goes from minus 1 to 1. So there's your region. Radially come outward from the origin. Put circles on the ends. They help you get your bounds. The biggest value is your upper bound. The smallest value is your lower bound. The circle is called r equals 1. So you go from 0 to 1 in r. What about theta? We have options, but the best option is to just to choose the positive option. So we're going to go that theta starts at pi and theta ends at 2 pi. Nothing wrong with doing negative pi to 0, but let's just, let's just do pi to 2 pi. You have your bounds. You're all set. Now let's go back to the integral and do our converting of the inside. Now, the inside is going to be 2 over 1 plus r x squared plus y squared is r squared, but there's a square root there. And dy dx becomes r dr d theta. Okay, great. We have our bounds. Let's go ahead and put it together. How are we going to integrate this, though? This one's a little tough, a little tough. There's two ways. I'm only going to do one way here. If you want to try the other way, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to do uh, substitution. I would like you to be the denominator. But degree of the denominator equals the degree of the numerator um, as far as like um, the degree out inside equals the degree outside. You could do u sub. It'll be a tricky u sub, but it'll work. Um, and uh, otherwise, we'd have to long divide. If you want to try out long dividing, you can definitely do that. I'm going to let u be equal to 1 plus r because d will just be dr. When it comes to r, though, you got to go back to the original substitution and solve for it. U minus 1 is what R is. So you have 2 times the U minus 1, that's 2R, and that's divided by U. And you can split that up. U over U is 1 minus 1 over U. Pull the 2 out. Go ahead and integrate. U minus the natural log of U with a double on the outside, the 2 on the outside. And then sub back in what U was. U was 1 plus R. You did it. You have your antiderivative. Use substitution. You need to be really skilled at it. Okay. All right. So now we have this outside integral who goes from pi to 2 pi. But wait, we have to plug a 1 in and plug a 0 into this. We, we, we just took the antiderivative. We didn't evaluate it. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus log 2. And then 1 minus log 1. But the log of 1 is 0. So it'll just be a 1. 2 log 2 minus 1. And then the, the integral is just pi to 2 pi. That's just going to be just a pi. It's, a, it's theta, and you do 2 pi and minus the pi. It just gives you a pi. Uh, inside here, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 minus log 2, 2 and pi. That's the answer. 2 pi times the quantity, 1 minus log 2. You just did your second double integral in polar. Good job. So in, a, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll do some more. Um, we'll do one more of these, but that's much more difficult. <clears throat> and then we'll start to discuss area, finding area with a double integral in polar. All right. Thanks for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. We're now deep in the calculus class finally. And um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Uh, comment down below, uh, like and subscribe. If you need resources, find your way to my website, calcoach.com. Lots of, uh, lots of resources there for you. Hopefully, it, uh, um, they'll be there to help you. All right. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.